Commerce, and I'm super happy that you're all here. This is a great uh, number of attendance for what we think is an important topic, and we've, I've done this a couple of times. Jim LeClaire of Smart Data Map Services has helped us to educate our chamber members on a lot of the worldwide web issues that you face or that you can take advantage of. The chamber's really mission is to promote our local economy by promoting our local businesses, supporting what you are trying to do, giving you tools and uh, vehicles to uh, do better in your organizations and your businesses. And this is a very powerful way. Obviously, we all know this is a major direction for organizations, businesses, services, charities, all sorts of uh, ways that you interact with the community. This is a key way to do it. And we're just super happy to do this. It's an ongoing process, so you know, contact the chamber. Contact Jim as a follow-up if you want to pursue this more. But this is a great opportunity to learn about the Chamber's services for you and Google and beyond. So Jim, thank you very much for doing this. Yep, thank you, Steve. Yes, well, again, I'm Jim with uh, Smart Data Map Services. I've been doing data mapping, which is basically pinpointing both information and business location on GPS maps so that people can find your specific business as opposed to uh, your neighbor. And we've been working with the Chamber because Chamber is also a business that people want to find. And we've been using this new Chamber Master tool because it has provided a, uh, a real uh, interesting, useful platform for everybody to use as a tool for this uh, data information. So what we're talking about today is getting your business online, which isn't just Google. It's actually uh, the generic word you want to remember from today is, is a citation which means that you are listed on somebody else's website. And the benefit of that is that uh, they're doing the promotion. So it's really interesting. On a, uh, on a new business, for example, a citation would be a listing on somebody else's website, like a Chamber of Commerce. And because the Chamber of Commerce is so established, Google sees uh, established content is more valuable than new content, than your own content. So initially, the very first place that a brand new business shows up is typically on a Chamber of Commerce website because they list you and Google sees, oh, new, new curated good content and up you pop. Later on, other sites that you might work more, uh, you pop up more. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how you get onto these sites. Okay, so this is the we're going to start with the Chamber site because this is the tool that you're going to use to, to uh, capture and record all the data that not only Google but all these citations want to know about your business. So for example, if I'm new to the area, I'm going to come to this Chamber site and I'm going to search for, I don't know the name of the businesses yet because I'm new to town, right? Mm -hmm. So let's find something in Belfast. So throw out something you want to find in Belfast. Not a business, some a type of a product or entity. Hiking. Hiking. So notice as we start to type, Chamber Master, this is, a, this is what's called a keyword. It's what someone's looking for. So in all of the chamber members, main alpaca experience has something relative to do. They've got hikes around their uh, liber. I think they do around their farm. Uh, in the area. Yeah. So they've put that on there because if we're a business owner, we really don't care how people find us, do we? We just want to find something appropriate. Let's try another one. So media is a category. This one has integrated into their name, and this new member has integrated into their services and into their keywords. So say so we don't have to know even what your name and company is if you've done your job properly. So let's take a look at what one of these sites can look like. 
And again, someone's looking for a map, they don't have to know the name of my company, but boom, look at that, just like that. And now this is the citation that the chamber provides you as part of your membership. It's like a little mini website. And it can have all kinds of information on it. It can have the, uh, the type of businesses. These are categories that the chamber um, allows you to pick. So for uh, uh, someone mentioned hiking, a keyword might be hiking, might be trails, might be outdoor, might be activity, you know, along that type of line. So as we go through this, keep thinking about from your own business, your information is different and unique to your business. I see a couple of uh, restaurateurs here. You've all got things that make you slightly different than your other restaurants in the area, and that's what goes into the keywords. So the information we're going to be looking for for the, for the yes? That's a great question. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> when we get in there really quick and put everything in. Well, when we did the, uh, we worked with Paul down at the farmers market, uh, United Farmers Market of Maine, and did this little presentation for their seventy vendors, and I said, "What do you think of the keywords?" And people said, "Wait a minute, where's my? I'm an apothecary. I'm a." Whatever, words I didn't even understand from a farmer's market standpoint. And so the United Farmers Market of Maine has 144 keywords. Wow. Because there are at least 144 different types of products and services that are available at the market. So great question. At some point in time, it might become, if we all overdo it, then the chamber might have to say, hey, come on. If you're not really appropriate to your business, I mean, the, the far United Farmers Market of Maine is kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't come up with 144 keywords for my business. It would, you know, it would just, and I don't really want to attract someone that's looking for uh, something that I don't do, for radio advertising. I don't want anybody asking me about that because I'm clueless and there are other people around that know about that. So the information that you can have, these are, the, these are the business categories, that's the type of business that you'll see when we get into the chamber site that you can choose from. And then these are business logos. And you notice that one of them is kind of squarish looking. That's called a, a uh, it goes like into a Facebook, it's called a profile image. And a lot of these sites are looking for both a squarish kind of an image and then a more horizontal, this is a landscape image. So your logo has to have two flavors too, a square one that fits into the square places and a horizontal one that fits in there. And then we can also, within the chamber site, we can put in, this is called name, address, and phone number. In data mapping lingo, they refer to it as NAP, N-A-P. And this is the, typically what people have, they know that information. But that's really sort of, uh, uh, that's kind of old school because there's so many other ways people are going to find you. And then you can put in social links. So any place that you, used to be easy back in the old days, you either you marketed for a Yellow Pages ad and that was about it. But now you have to really know where your customers are and be in the social media that your customers are in because they may want to find you on something other than a chamber website. You've got to be there. The chamber, this chamber website is, is a great place to summarize all the content. So the content could be hours of operation. Uh, we can have video imagery. We can have pictures. Are we the ones that put that video there, or the chamber does? Uh, you do it. The chamber provides you the platform, which we'll look at in just a minute, okay. but you have to populate it. So the, what you can put on here is information about your business, which would be, this might come off of your website, for example. 
And then things you want to focus on can be highlights, which can be links to places on your website or your Facebook or something like that. Media can be videos and imagery. And then the map shows you how to get there. The map's really important for uh, people that occupy close business addresses to other people. See these two businesses, Robin's Nest and Smart Data Map? They're in the same building. So if I, I, what I've done here is I want to highlight Smart Data Map. And similarly, on Patty's Robin's Nest chamber page, the Robin's Nest is highlighted. Because if you're in a business that's, uh, say you're a downtown restaurant, for example, you don't really want to see all your competitors on the page without your name being represented equally. All right, so this is how it looks to the general public. So now this is what the chamber master, this is, this is called like a back end or a management tool that the chamber provides. And you'll get a login and a password so that you can now get into this site so that you can manage all this information. So now we're into the, this is the work session part. If you start looking at that sheet, this is what the chamber master wants to know about your business. And it wants to know much more than you may even have provided or even thought about yourself. This may even be more encompassing this on, than on your website. So the information down here at the left, personal information would be who's going to actually be uh, managing your page so they can log in. And again, nobody sees this part of it. This is, this is your background information for your business. So for example, this has my username. You can have multiple people that might manage your page. So you can have multiple logins so they can access this stuff. And then this is a, if you want to be a, if you're a small business and, and your personality is part of the business, then you want to have your image on somewhere within your business marketing. If you're more a larger organization, that may be not appropriate, then you might just use just logos. So I'm going to go down here to company, because that's what we want to focus on today. So when you get into the chamber master, it's actually going to help you, give you like a little uh, coach through the whole session, right? So it's going to say, it wants organizational information. As you work on it, here's what it's going to ask you for. And as you complete it, it'll keep track of your progress so you know how much you got to finish. So first one is organizational information. Again, this is the uh, NAP, name, address, phone number, which you're going to put in here. And then your website address, all that kind of stuff. And then down here, you want to look at uh, one of the things that's quite valuable is how long you've been doing this. Because for a lot of people, the longer you've been doing it, the better it is for people that are looking for you. As far as employees goes, I don't really find that. Uh, for most businesses I work, that, that's really not something that uh, I worry too much about, but you can fill that in at whatever you feel comfortable with. So your website information is going to be how it's displayed and then what the actual name of your website is. Anything where you've got these little buttons here that says verify, you can push it and test it. Make sure it's working before you try to publish it. Because if you're not sure about you know, some of these sites. And then down here, you can put in other social sites that you're on. And right now, they've got LinkedIn and Facebook probably as 
chamber mass evolves, there might be some other ones on here. But at this point in time, these are the two. So if you've got a, how many people have a LinkedIn account? How many people have a Facebook account? Okay, so for a business Facebook, you want to put that on here because that's where a lot of people might be looking for you. Can we add Instagram? Steve, question for you. Are other social networks coming along with Chamber Master? I think there is a place for other. I, I don't know uh, that they have Instagram at this time as a field that's available. So that's a great question. It would be up to the software vendor to enhance that. Yep. Instagram is very popular, though, so I would expect that we're not the only people asking that type of a question. And then this for web. Some businesses, it's more, much more useful than Facebook. Yes. Again, that's, that's a question that there's no one answer for. That's a question that you ask your customers. If your customers are on Instagram primarily, you need to be. Pinterest, Facebook, wherever your customers are. And generally, they'll, you know, as you run a business, they'll tell you, I haven't seen you on whatever, you know. So the answer to that question is whatever, whatever site your customers are on, you want to be on. There's no way to add it there. Not at this point. Okay. Yeah. This web description and text is information that shows up down here. Yes, yes. If, great question. So if, for some people, um, how many people use something other than a direct URL for a Facebook, I mean for a, a website for their primary contact, like a Instagram or Facebook? So, no, as you're, uh, so you don't have a website. Yeah, so, so if you're, it, it, this is more appropriate. If you're a small startup and you're saying, well, you know, do I need a website? Do I need a Facebook? How many of these things do I really need? Because each one of them comes with a money cost or, or time cost. Some people just use Facebook because all the customers are there anyway. And when you click on the website, both on the chamber and even on uh, Google, you click on website and up can come Facebook or whatever you put in there. So you don't necessarily need you don't necessarily need a uh, website in today's world. So all this information comes from your website and gets posted in here. Now once. You, once you have this site populated, you can use this to then populate other citations. So I'm going to just keep this in mind. Once you've got this, you take the effort to populate this and you go to another site like uh, Google. We're going to look at Google My Business or it could be, I mean, there's literally hundreds of, of sites. They're all asking for the same information. The first time you do it with uh, Chamber Mash is a little bit intimidating, but the next, next one you do, looks really similar. And the third one you do looks like really similar. So if you've got all this content stashed someplace, I used to use just a Word document, but now this is uh, structured in si such a fashion that it really makes it easy to do si other citations using this. And you can just cut and paste from one to the next. Place for hours of operation. Um, Hours of operation are one of the most changeable um, data fields out there. So you've got to really pay attention to it because this one is just a static information list. But if you go to some place like uh, Google or Facebook, it's going to tell you that the business is closed if the hours indicate that it's closed. And the traveling public this is what they're going to do when they're looking for your open business. They're going to say it's closed. It's right there. It's open. They're not even going to see it. So you've got to really make sure your hours are up to date. How do you, how do you get to that page? Pardon? How do you get to that page that you're 
This is on Chamber Master. Oh, no. Uh, yep, I'm trying to find it. I just, I must have missed a step. Chamber Master, organizational information. Company information. Company, thank you. Sorry. Company, and then web page, website information. Thank you, sorry. Okay, yep, no problem. And then these highlights over here are right here. So say, uh, say you're a restaurant, and one of your highlights might be menu. So you put on here menu, and over here it would say menu, and over here you'd put in the URL to wherever your menu is listed, which can be anywhere, it can be on your Facebook, it can be anywhere. And now the, the, the customer on, from the chamber site can go right to your menu. So these... So you could put Instagram there. Yes. Yep. Yep. So these are whatever you want them, whatever you've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five bullets that can show up in here. And you get to choose what they are and where they go. Pretty cool. And then down here is keywords. So let's, let's do a little exercise. First row, you. What kind of business you got? Okay, so what would be keywords for quilting? Fabric. Fabric. Sewing. Sewing. This is things that were people coming to the area and you think might be interested in your business, you'd put in these type of keywords. Sewing. Put in the word guild. Guild. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that way people are going to using Chamber Master can type in Guild, they're not going to know, have to know the name of your business, and you're going to pop up there with anybody else that does Guilds. So see how the keywords are really specific to a business. Let's try a... Is there a way to put in keywords as a keyword? Pardon? Is there a way to put in keywords as a keyword? Pardon? Like, for example, is there a way to put in two words as a keyword? You can put in as many as you want. No, the, the keywords are individual words. So let's go back to. Uh, you don't have to use commas between them, right? No. So uh, let's type in a. Uh, say I want to find a beer in Belfast. The way this works is you don't even have to type in the full word. As soon as I put in enough words. So this is, this is all the places of the chamber members that I can buy a beer in Belfast. <laughs> I see some shocked looks back here, you know. <laughs> this is how important keywords are. Because when we come to town, I don't know anything about this town, but boy, am I thirsty, and I want a beer. And I can go up to Hitchbourne. I can go to United Farmers Market of Maine. I can go to Belfast Bay Brewing. Well, not really, but um, I can go to Nautilus. <laughs> they don't use that keyword. Okay? So you don't have to you don't have to be these aren't these aren't phrases. I know. Keyword is simply a quick and easy word that the minimal number, the shorter the better, because that's where that's how it's gonna be found. what about something like handmade? Repeat that please. Handmade. Yeah, you can make it handmade. Let's try it, matter of fact. Handmade. So Patchwork Plus, they do handmade things. There's that United Farmers Market of Maine. Boy, they do a lot of things. And then one mill who's actually a uh, medical CBD provider and also has a clothing line which is handmade. So, so the point is you don't have to, you want the words to be short and sweet because that's what's going to give you the results. Okay, so now we'll go to website categories. 
These are the pre-selected categories that the chamber offers. This is really, really important because what you view your category of business as is not necessarily what the chamber nor Google is searching by. So you got to really take some time. When you go to this site, come in here and you can see, uh, let's, these are the available categories. This is, this is my specific listing. So under the B category choices, these are what we've got. So business specialist is the one that I've chosen. Let's go into uh, R, because I know there might be like, uh, so in R you can see like there's restaurants as opposed to like a Chinese restaurant or a brew pub or something like that. So you might want a more specific category than the, what the choices are. Too bad, doesn't work that way. And the benefit of that is that what that means is nobody's looking for that here. When you do the same thing, we get to Google My Business, Google, you try to find a very specific category and Google says, don't have it. But they're also telling you nobody's looking for it. So go for another choice. So this will take you, when you first get in here to Chamber Master, what I recommend is no matter what your business is, go through every A through Z to see if there's anything that might apply to your business. Because this is the choices that they allow you. So here, like uh, Quilt Lady, would arts and crafts fit? Mm -hmm. So that would be a good one in there. No, you can have multiples. Okay. How many, Steve, does the Chamber Master allow? I, I don't even know there's a limit. Um, huh. There may be, but you can select me. When we, uh, when we go here, that's where these categories show up. So I think, I think uh, there is an actual limit because they can only fit so many on here. Mm -hmm. Let me just, uh, let me try. Let me try United. Uh, just a quick note also, the category you select as your primary category, the first one, determines where you end up being displayed in the Chamber's annual magazine. Mm, okay. You can purchase more categories for the magazine because it's a printed thing. Additional categories here are free. Yeah, so this, this is again back to United Farmers Market of Maine, which is a very broad-based business, also has broad-based categories. What is the activities and recreation twice? Excuse me? Yep, I'm not, that's a, that's a good chamber ma master question. Because all we're doing is checking off the categories on this other list, and then they're showing up over here. It could be a subcategory under something else as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Like outdoors or something like that. So, like, also, I saw activities. Like arts and So as again, we go through the categories, you want to find the ones that are uh, most appropriate to what you're going to do. Okay. And then the logos. Again, there's, uh, there's a couple of different places where these logos sh show up. So let's say, for example, let me go back here, and I want to find... Uh, When I find more than one company that matches a category, Chamber Master then dis displays a list. And on this list, you can see some people have gone into the logo section of Chamber Master and some haven't. Mm -hmm. So having the logo in there makes it just a little bit, uh, it's kind of a combination of uh, 
information that's here. Um, Belfast Farmers Market has a basic information, Belfast Main Real Estate as well. Uh, Martha has a little bit more description. Is this generated from that page you showed us Yes. Earlier? Yep. Yep. And these people have a logo and information. There's the Creative Coalition. So this is where the logos show up. All right? Yes. And there's two places to select logos. This is called the search results logo. Mm -hmm. And then back at your chamber page, you can have a page logo as well. As Jim mentioned before, they can be different sizes and shapes. Yep. What is the size? Do you know? Hmm? Do you know what the size is? I'm trying to Not off the top, it. no. No, there's probably a help screen somewhere in Chamber Master that, that talks about that kind of thing. So there's the logo. So again, remember, you want to have a profile style one, which can come from your uh, Facebook page, because that's square. It's good to have your business information on it. And then you want to have one that's rectangular. That would be like your Facebook cover page, because they're displayed that way on, on the site. Okay. Any question about that? Yeah. I'm assuming you can put something on there, but you can go in and change it whenever you want. Yeah, you have, com you have complete control over this uh, Chamber Master content. As a Chamber member, you get to make it whatever you want. You can change it every day, too. There's no, it's really cool because you can, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an instant publish, too, which is nice, because you want to see, OK, you've done this, but you want to see what the potential customer sees, you can quick and look at, see it right there. It publishes just like that. So there's a photo gallery where you can put in images. There's a uh, Video section. You got any video questions? Ask that guy sitting there. Well, I was just going to ask you, how do you, do you upload your videos or do you have to link them to a YouTube channel? Right now, the only way Chamber Master does it is you have to have a YouTube channel or have it posted on Ned's YouTube channel. Or Vimeo or something like that. And anything that you can put a link to. Yes. I'm not sure, Ned, if, uh, because this actually. Uh, display. I do not know if Vimeo links work. We have to check that out. Well, that's disappointing. It is. It is. They all, you know, it's all, uh, uh, all this marketing nowadays is cross marketing. So I'm sure uh, YouTube and Chamber Master have a relationship and they don't with Vimeo. But that's just life, you know? No. Correct. 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 But let's make a li let's make a little uh, side note of that because uh, uh, one of the things that you can do as part of your Google My Business listing is have a YouTube channel, and that way you can post them there, and then you can have the channel on your website. Then you don't have to. You know, it's kind of a, you know, again, that's a, that's a Ned type of question because Ned can do very long, really high resolution things on Vimeo that, you know, YouTube's geared into a different market altogether. So when I use Ned for the creating a video, he sends it to me and he's got it on his channel and I might shorten it up to stick it on a, you know, this, this video came from a guy that was out of Vermont that he posted it up to YouTube. So, it, you know. But for the chamber site, you can only stick it in in the YouTube. So unless you have a YouTube channel, you can't take a video there? Correct. Correct. YouTube, really simple to get, to get a channel. And then the map placement, you can check to see how you're displayed. This comes up real time. This tells you whether or not your Google listing is uh, in the right place. Yes? They have multiple locations. So at Kama Land Trust and in Belfast, do you have four or five sites? No. Four or five sites? No. You're going to have one 
location. Typically, that would be a, uh, a good workaround with that would be to, to uh, uh, on your... Uh, well, our office is in Camden. I don't really mess with it. People Yep. What I would recommend is here, put locations and then put a link to your website that shows all the locations. But you can't have multiple locations in, in Chamber Master unless you have multiple memberships and each one has their own. And this will tell you whether or not your location is correct relative to Google and uh, how you show up relative to other businesses that are nearby. And this last section is membership badges if you like to do cross-posting and you're into uh, HTML coding, you can take this and stick it onto your website so that you're cross-posting back to the chamber. Say, I'm a proud member of. Any questions on Chamber Master? No, this is simply to generate a badge for the Belfast Chamber to then take in to your website. Okay. Your website. So, so you can't you can't put badges from other organizations like Mazda onto your website. Yes, you can, but they would have to do something similar. Mm -hmm. You can have as many as you want if you can get the, HTML. the code. So if, you're, if, you like, if you like that kind of thing, you can have a you know, links page on your website and you can have many, many as you want. This is just simply to generate the ones specifically for your listing on the Chamber website. We just give that to our IT guy, right? And they put it on. That's not the right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. You just say, hey, he'll, say, he'll, he'll ask you for some gibberish and you just send it to him. And you just tell them where you want it, and it'll show up. So now this is, we're just switching gears. We're leaving the chamber, and now we're going into, into Google. Because while the chamber starts at the top of the list, Google gets there for a new business, displaces it because they're spending a gazillion more dollars to be there. So this is the next most popular site you're going to see. And this is a Google uh, business listing, which has similar information. Remember that uh, name, address, phone number stuff, NAP? That's in there. Hours of operation are in here. Are they taking that from the chamber? Pardon? Are they taking that information from the chamber website? No. Or is that something we have to talk to? This is a separate, these are no, there's no linkage between the Chamber and Google. So they're not using the Chamber's keywords then? No, absolutely not. Great question. And in fact, um, nobody else is either. It's really, it's really a hassle. Like when we're data mapping someone, you go through this effort for the Google categories, you go to Apple, different categories, Go to Yelp, different categories. TripAdvisor, different categories. Because they're all arch rivals with each other. They don't want to make it easy. I mean, uh, one, of these, one of the first seminars, I did a senior college thing a couple of years back, and someone was like, well, this is just ridiculous. Why is there more than one map out there? And it's like, well, you know, welcome to uh, capitalism. You know? Yes, Steve. Well, the point of view I'd like to make, Jim, is that those other sites like Google and Yelp are guessing about your business. Well, great question. <laughs> well, no, that's a, there's two, two questions, okay? <laughs> I'm going to address the first one is uh, how does Google get this information? Anybody use Apple, I mean, uh, Google Maps? Anybody ever sitting in uh, Del Vino's and the Google pops up and says, can I ask you a few questions? And why this is so important is that if you as a business owner don't 
pay attention to the content on Google, I think this is a, I was shocked that Google did this a couple years ago. They allowed um, the people sitting in your business to make suggestions about the business. And if the owner doesn't accept or reject them, they accept them. So all of a sudden, you're, you know, it's like uh, the insane, <laughs> the inmates are running the asylum, you know, it's like, what the heck is going on here? But that's, again, that's the way it is. So that information comes from the uh, uh, people sitting in your, in your business. It also comes from robots that are out there scouring information to get new businesses on their sites. Now, now Google will, will only call you if you do one thing, and that's if you're sitting on your Google My Business page that you've already claimed, and you click the Call Me button. All these other calls are just uh, scammers that are trying to pitch you. Uh, once we data map a, a business and put them in all these citations, all of a sudden they, they say, gee, I'm getting a million calls a day now. Well, unfortunately, now you're a prospect for a million people trying to pitch you credit card services or something like that because now you're being found where you weren't before. But Google will never call you unless you request that specific call and the call will come within minutes. So any, none, of these other biz, none of these other calls are from business. They may say they're from a Google representative, but if you ask them, oh, do you work for Google? Click, because they're just, you know, they're just trying to, trying to pitch you. So now let's take a look at what this actually looks like, much like Chambermaster, there's a back end to Google My Business. Okay? Can anybody get into this? Pardon? Can anybody get into this? No. Of no, only the person who owns it, me. So nobody else can get into this. This, this is once you claim a particular site, it's much like uh, owning a Facebook business. You can assign other people to help you manage it. We help a lot of people manage sites. But no one can claim your business away from you. One thing that's really, really important is that... How do you get to our own listing on this? Um, we'll get to that in just a second, okay? So once you've got this information, you can start seeing that... Uh, let's go to this information site. See, anybody see any similarity between Chambermaster and this site? See all this information stuff on the side? Where do we see on uh, Chambermaster had an info section? Chambermaster had a photos section. So let's get into the uh, info section. And then look at that. Categories, just like Chambermaster. The difference is that the, 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 the categories here are slightly different. So when I first started the business, you know, 2008, they said, what do you do? I do data mapping. I'm talking to the Google people, right? Like, what do you do? I said, data mapping. I felt like it was, you know, Elvis and Costello, you know. No, what do you do? I said, well, I help people get, you know, on the maps. Said, oh, you're advertising. I'm like, oh. But that's what they, that's how it was classified. There is no data mapping category. There's no location services. So for my business, I have to choose mapping service, marketing, or advertising. So when you guys, after you've done your chamber master category list, that'll be sort of a place to start. But when we get into Google, you're going to say, <coughs> you're going to search for the categories, and they're going to give you which ones are available. And you pick the ones that are the best fit for your, for your business. And again, you can have up to three different categories on this, on this site. You've got an address in, uh, for some businesses, instead of people coming to your location, like uh, uh, 
A restaurant can't do much business unless the people walk through the threshold. But if you're a service industry like a plumber, you go to the customer site. So when I, in my service area, I work, I work in the entire Maine. And then hours of operation are also in Google. And they're, this is what's displayed as to whether or not the business is open or closed. Super important for restaurants with seasonal hours. If you don't make your hours open in the springtime when you're actually open, Google's going to say you're closed. Similarly in the fall when things shift around a little bit. And they've added this thing recently that you can say in addition to your standard hours, you can put in holidays and special events, that kind of thing. And then down here is your you know, phone number information. And then there's a description. So again, this information is, can be cut and pasted from the uh, chamber master listing to show you how this all goes together. Yes, it was, it was uh, populated with name, address, phone number. Oh, okay. What they could find. Yeah, yeah, what they could have gleaned off of a, uh, another site. Probably the first site that I was, uh, was ever on was uh, Secretary of State. Anybody ever notice, you know, people went out, where, how does this stuff get on there, right? Um, Who's, who has started a business recently and registered it with the state of Maine? Anybody? How long did it take for the credit card people to call you? Yeah. Yeah. Literally? Yeah. So all of these sites either provide it as public knowledge or they sell it. So as soon as the information's in there, um, it's, it's published. When we're doing a like a, a, a cleanup, the, some of the people that we encounter that owned a business, oh, a generation earlier, say you're up in Acadia, you got like some type of tour business, something, uncle started it, sells it to the kid, transfers it to his wife, whatever. Here it is 20 years later, and they're like, something's going, I just can't figure out what, why, why people can't find me. And I'll go to the, one of these citation listings, there'll be a number there, and I'll call it, and the guy will recognize, hey, wait a minute, that's my uncle's phone number. <laughs> well, he never took it off. Nobody's going to go in there and edit the old data other than you or somebody like me. That um, We did a project a little while ago, this springtime. There was a United Mid Coast Charities, which is a member, um, had the same phone number of a, as an office supply company that had gone out of business. And uh, they were getting all these phone calls for wanting typing services and, and uh, what the heck's going on? So it, they had more citations under that telephone number for the old business than they did for Midcoast Charities. So we had to go in there and clean all those up and change the the number around. So now Mid Coast Charities just gets calls that are, that are appropriate. So again, we've got the po pictures that you can post. Anybody recognize these guys? So we do a lot of cross posting. Anything that makes it more interesting to people, you want to put a business up there, I mean, a post that shows like this has a chamber, you know, you can post anything you want up there for business ones, but if you put in interesting content. We work with, uh, there's a company up in Belfast called, I mean, Bucksport called Carrier's Lobster, and one of the guys from uh, ER came in and, uh, and said, shh, shh, don't tell anybody. But they said, well, can I use your picture? And he said, after I leave, it got uh, 30, over 30,000 views on their Facebook, because it's a popular kind of guy. Had nothing to do with the restaurant other than the fact that he was there, but they picked up uh, 250 Facebook likes over the weekend just because 
You know, so try to make your pictures interesting. Can I just ask, the little eyes at the bottom with the numbers, is that the number of times people have clicked on that picture on Google? Yep. Or just, so just on that, based on that link? Yep, this is how many times people have looked at the, looked at the image. So it's kind of it's kind of fascinating. You go like uh, like people seem to like this picture of Frank better than they like my certificate from Angus. So you know, <laughs> just how it works. But when you post a, an image up there, Google is very informative. I mean, when you post things up there, much like Facebook, it'll tell you what works and what what doesn't work. One thing that can be frustrating for some businesses is that uh, restaurants in particular, people can post to your Google site and you don't have control over what they post. Same thing with uh, lodging. Like a lot of times people will take a less than a, they've paid, you know, photographer to do these beautiful pictures and then someone will take a picture of the bathroom and post it and, well, not much you can do about that. And then also in here, we've got uh, review sections. So this is something that, uh, it, do we have reviews on Chamber Master? I think so. I don't know. I think so. But Google certainly, because Google drives this stuff. When they're sitting in your business and you're having, waiting for the, your beer to show up, Google wants you to write a review and post pictures and all that kind of stuff. So you really have to pay attention to this. Any questions on Google My Business? How do you get there to do your own business? What's your... Uh, what's your company name? Willow Moon Ventures. Pardon? Willow Moon Willow Moon Ventures. Ventures. So see this here? Okay. Oh, got it. You claim that business and it will ask you all kinds of information. In fact, is, um, is it free? Yes. Yep. All of these sites that we're talking about today are, are free. The way, actually, a good question because there are two different types of uh, citations: free and paid. And uh, some of the paid ones are appropriate. Some of them aren't. After it's claimed, can somebody else come in and claim it? No. No. Could someone go, if it's not claimed, could I go to claim a business? And, and let's just say I did, just to be obnoxious, it, it's a rival. What, if someone did that to my business, could I actually approach Google and say, wait a minute, somebody else claims my business, even if it was an honest error? Let me give you the, let's fast forward a couple of years. Say someone claimed it and they left the company. Yeah. The, the actual owner of the business can claim it and request transfer of ownership for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And generally, the most important uh, part is the phone number. Oh, okay. If you've got a old 800 number that you're deciding that you don't want to use anymore because it costs you a couple of bucks a month, mm -hmm. do not cancel it until you search out where it is. Because the phone number is the primary um, way to find you. And that's the number that Google's going to call. So if you've got a phone number and you switch to a cell or something like that, and all of a sudden this number's lost, it's a royal pain in the butt. Because then they've got to go back into the, the old school that send you a postcard. But it can take weeks. And a lot of times you want to, you know, maybe keep that, keep that phone number. When our buddies over at Pro Private Home Care started up, they had uh, called up Verizon, give me a phone number, blah, 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 you know. Well, at, somewhere at the same point in time, everybody remember Nanette from Beyond the Sea? 
So she had the same phone number, decided to move to Lincolnville, and gave up the number. And uh, I called her up and said, because whatever what happened was private home care was getting calls for gifts. Because she'd been in, uh, Beyond the Sea had been in business for 10 years. She had all these citations built up. So I called, tapped her. She didn't want to spend the extra money to get the phone in her name. She had, that was part of her plan, move to Lincolnville, get out of Belfast, everything's cool. So we were able to grab all these citations and just change them over to private home care for ones that were appropriate and tell the other ones that we're not a private home care isn't a gift shop anymore. So that's how you claim. So we're getting to the end of the session. If everybody wants, anybody wants to stick around for some hands-on with their actual, we'll, we'll be here. But I'm going to show you um, what the scope of citations can a is actually looks like. So once you're out there into the internet data stream, you can create your own citations or you, you'll just get picked up by sites, okay? So this is my business. You can see I'm listed all kinds of different places. And in fact, I've got 154 citations, none of which I've paid anything for. And I haven't paid any advertising for because they're just, I'm just monitoring the food stream. And, and I get this report every month that tells me, oh, here's a new one that came up. What the heck is this one? This is actually the Secretary of State. And this is my, this is my corporate name. And this is, people, do anybody remember the Maine Coast Welcome Center? That was our business before the Smart Data Map. And this is my, so, so this report, this is how deep these searches go and how people wonder where does this information all come from. There's that one there, and then there's uh, this one here. This is actually a listing for the United Farmers Market of Maine. But they talked about me, about Smart Data Map back in June, and that gets picked up by the internet. So it's really interesting to see how um, deep these citations go, because a lot of times you can find that you can, you might want to share this information on your Facebook to show people are talking about you or, you know, and uh, so that's what, a, this is what a citation report looks like. And then this shows what happens when we, we just started working with the, uh, the chamber, uh, what, about a month ago, Steve? Yep. So since we loaded the chamber's information into the data stream, look at all these new citations that have come up since we did that. Steve, do you get any bills for any of these? No. No, it's still all free, right? So let's see, let's see what uh, Real Main Weddings found the chamber. So what's cool is that Real Main Weddings has a link to the Belfast Chamber of Commerce, which they didn't have to pay for, which is really cool because now someone looking for a wedding, this was back in July of 2017, says, oh, well, look at this, I can get more information here. That's the value of a citation. Drives people to your business and it doesn't cost you anything. 